at the church my husband and I attend in Tennessee, where we moved from, our former pastor had a precious little special needs granddaughter. And in his journey of being a grandfather to a special needs child and a father to a son who had a special needs child, as well as being a pastor, he discovered that one of the most unchurched groups are parents with special needs children because they just don't feel like they have a safe place to leave their child for those couple of hours. So the church made a decision to actually build a special needs ministry there. And they built a special needs building so that on Sunday mornings, parents of special needs children could leave and safely leave their children. But it also is a place where families can drop off their special needs children all during the week. So not only did it become a ministry to the church, it also became a ministry to the city. My husband, Philly, has a deep love for these friends, they called them, and so he served for many years inside of this ministry, and he would come home scratched and bitten and hugged and kissed, and he would have all these beautiful stories of life and humor, and then he would talk about the gratitude of the parents because a pastor who had a special needs granddaughter tore off the roof to get families to Jesus. That's how most ministries began because our heart has been so impacted by what Jesus has done for us and how he's healed us and set us free that we want others to encounter that for their own lives. I think of the ministry that Pastor Michelle brought to our church last year called Grief Share. The man that began Grief Share actually began with divorce care because he had walked through a divorce of his own and God had extravagantly healed him. And he wanted others who were walking through the heartbreak and loss of divorce to know that healing was available. And then he lost his daughter. And God healed the deep wound. And now people benefit from the healing he experienced because he tore off the roof. And this is what we find here in our passage this morning. You know, in the Old Testament, we usually get to walk out the whole story of the people. We know Abraham almost from beginning to end. We found Moses in the basket until he gets to Pharaoh's palace, until the Lord himself buries him. We see the full picture, but in the Gospels, you kind of just get the cliff notes. You don't get the whole story. So we kind of have to use our sanctified imagination, as my dad would call it, and we get to fill in the pieces. And so inside of this story, let's use ours for a moment. The word of Jesus is out. Even though he told them before this, he said, just don't go tell anybody. But they can't help themselves. I mean, who could? If you're seeing healings, if you're seeing demonic people, people who are demon-possessed, set free and transformed, if you're seeing him calm storms, eventually the word about Jesus is going to get out. And so Jesus is in Capernaum, and four friends hear about it. And they have this friend who they've just had enough of his pain and his struggle and possibly his disappointment and his hopelessness. And they believe that the answer is in the house in Capernaum. So they make a plan. I have no idea how they made this plan. It could have been rushed. It could have been frantic. You know, hey, we've got to go, and we've got to go now. It could have been all that, or it could have been calm. And eventually, one looked at the three others, and he said, you grab that corner. You grab that corner. You grab that corner, and I'll grab this corner. 
and up they go in the middle of the street. Can you see this picture? Can you imagine on Lake Oconee Boulevard if, if you saw four people pushing four ends of a stretcher when you were just trying to go to Publix? Because they heard Jesus was in the house. They didn't hear that really good worship was in the house. They didn't even hear that really good teachers were in the house. They didn't even really hear that really good programs were in the house. What they heard was Jesus is in the house. Don't we want to be where Jesus is? Don't we want to be in the house where we feel and sense and know the presence of God is there? So they weren't going to let their friends miss this moment. And I've learned that when the real, genuine, life-giving presence of Jesus is in a place, people want 